Welcome to this video on matrix ODE analogies. So this is really a precursor to describing the method of undetermined coefficients uh, for solving inhomogeneous equations. And there is a very strong analogy or really just fundamental linear algebra that connects the two problems, matrix, um, matrix equations, which you've already studied, and ODEs. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, here I'm going to just do a side-by-side -side comparison of a matrix equation and an ODE. So we have a simple matrix equation, let's say AX equals zero, and that is what we call a homogeneous equation. The analogy in ODEs is, so first I'm going to use the operator notation for the left-hand side of our ODE. So what I mean by L of Y is, let's say for an example, y double prime minus 2y prime plus y. And now that is the analogy of the matrix times x, except here it's an operator applied to y. And on the right-hand side, I force that to be equal to 0, and that, that defines an equation that'll have some solution. OK, so um, next slightly more complicated equation would be ax equal vector b, where b is not zero. And so the analogy with uh, ODEs is, let's say we use the same operator notation for the same operator, y double prime minus 2y prime plus y. And now we're going to set that equal to some analogy of a vector, which is some function, e to the minus 2t. Okay, so that's another analogy drawn. And hopefully as I go through these, you'll start to see why I'm calling these analogous. So, it, and I can just outline it a little bit already. So the matrix A is an operator that takes a vector X and it gives you a vector A times X. And this procedure here in the middle is what we call linear. And in the same way, um, the function Y of T goes to another function, L of y. And what function is it? Well, if you take the second derivative of y and you subtract 2 times the first derivative plus y, that's the function that L spits out. And this procedure here is also linear. What do we mean by linear? I mean that L of uh, y plus z, two functions, has to be the same as L of y plus L of z for any y and any z at least ones that are differentiable enough to plug into the operator. And we also need to know that L of some constant times Y is equal to C times that constant times L applied to Y. And if you plug this formula for Y, uh, L of Y, or if you plug at Y plus Z and C times Y into a formula like this, you'll find that these are true for um, the types of uh, derivative operators that we are dealing with. Okay, so the next uh, observation about systems like this that I want to draw analogies between, solutions to one that's this equation up here for the matrix case. When a is so when a is invertible, the only solution is x equals zero. But when a is not invertible, And I'm going to just make the assumption that A is um, kind of very not invertible in the sense that it has um, two rows or two columns that are dependent on the others. Then we have solutions that are of the form x equal c1 times some vector, let's say 0, 1, 0, minus 1, plus another c2 times some other vector, let's say 2, 1, 1. And so for that kind of an example, we have an entire plane of solutions to the matrix equation AX equals zero. For the ODE case, um, we'll always have uh, what we call a null space of, of dimension two, just like we had here. Here, it's not guaranteed, but with these ODEs, these second order ODEs that we're dealing with, we'll always have that case. And solutions to the ODE one will look like y of t equal c. Let me move this over. 
y of t is equal to c1 e to the t plus c2 t e to the t, and that's because we had a repeated root in that original equation, the root of the characteristic equation. And so we get a structure like this, which is very similar in the sense that we have a vector multiplied by some arbitrary constant, another vector multiplied by an arbitrary constant, so we have sort of this two-dimensional space of solutions. Similarly, in some function notion of vector, we have the same structure, a constant times e to the t and a constant times t e to the t. Okay, so um, let's go with one more step here, the obvious one, which is now let's look at solutions to two above this one here. And so in that case, and also still when A is not invertible, and we get in that case, we get X has a structure C1 times some vector plus C2 times some vector. And because it's the same matrix, these vectors are the same as they were previously. But now we have a particular solution 0, 1, 2, let's say. And this all depends obviously on what the entries of A and B are, but I'm just sort of inventing some, some cases here to illustrate. Okay, so we call this this one x sub h, a homogeneous solution, or a solution to the homogeneous equation ax equals zero. And anytime you plug this guy into a, or multiply this by a, you get zero out of it. So it really doesn't contribute very much to the output, it's just zero. And then this one, x particular here, is, uh, is going to be what gives us the right-hand side b when we apply a to it. Okay, so what does that look like? Let's draw a little sketch of it. So here is our 3D space, and the particular solution, I'll actually underline it in purple, and because I'm going to draw uh, the vector as purple. So that's a particular vector. It doesn't have a C in front of it, so it's just that vector. So think of it as getting us to that point. And then these other two vectors, which solve the homogeneous equation, form an entire plane around that point, or, or at the tip of that, at that vector. And so let's uh, fill that in a bit. So now you can see we have this offset plane that doesn't go through the origin because it solves an ax equal b equation. And this particular solution that we found here, this could have been any one of a number of solutions. And you can see that in the plane. We don't really need to have found that one. It could have been just as easily another one that goes from the origin up to the surface of the plane here or anywhere else. But we just have to find one particular one, and then the C1 and C2 will allow us to get anywhere else in that green surface. Okay, so what is the analogy here with ODEs? So the analogy with ODEs is that solutions to 2 on the right-hand side look like y of t equal C1e to the t plus C2 T e to the T plus, and I'm just going to write down the answer here. We'll learn how to get this answer once we study the method of undetermined coefficients, but that one's going to be 1 over 9 times e to the minus 2t. And this is the solution to the homogeneous equation, y h of t. And this one is the solution to the particular solution to the inhomogeneous equation. And if I were to draw the analogous picture to this one, it's kind of hard to draw it because functions are very complicated when thought of as vectors. It's hard to picture them really as uh, vectors, uh, but I'll try and do that anyway. They won't look like vectors, but I want to show the flexibility 
that C1 and C2 would give you, or at least C1. It's going to be hard to draw both. So now we have T here, and we have the solution Y of T here. And so in purple, I'm going to draw the, the particular solution again. And that's going to start at 1 over 9, and it's going to decay away. And there's no varying that constant, 1 over 9. right? That, that got fixed. Uh, because it's no longer the equation with a right-hand side in there, is uh, it, it no longer solutions no longer have arbitrary constants in front of them. It, there's a particular constant that we need to use. And so when I add to that, let's say I'm just going to focus on adding the C2 here, the C1 part. So if C1 is 0, I get the basic purple curve. But then if C1 is a small constant, and I start a positive one, I start just above it, and it grows exponentially. And if it starts a little bit more above it, it grows exponentially in the same direction, just more quickly. And if I start below just a little bit, it drops down exponentially, and even more drops down exponentially. And so, in a sense, I can try to draw, this is, um, so far I've just got like one line, so let me show what I mean over here. Imagine if I had just gone in the C1 direction and mapped out a single line in this picture. That's kind of what I've drawn here, except now it sort of covers the whole plane in front of us. So I'll draw that like this, for lack of another way of diagramming it. And then if I were to add the C2 component, that would make this drawing even harder to draw because the shape of this would change in a different way. And the best way to think about this is adding the C1 times a function is just sort of changing the shape of this solution in a particular way. And the second one, C2, is changing the shape of it in a different way. And that's kind of the analogy of adding vectors. So that is um, the analogy between these matrix ODEs, sorry, these matrix problems and these ODE equations, or these differential equations. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll wrap this up here and continue on the other side of the page with some examples showing how to carry out the method of undetermined coefficients.